So welcome back, welcome back again. So this is the last session about uh, uh, what we are going to present today. And uh, what I'm going to talk about in the next uh, 30, 35, 40 minutes maximum is taking a step back on thinking information security, not just from a technology standpoint, but a bit more. When I say not just from a technology standpoint, I mean uh, when we think of any, any, uh, any security problems or any IT related problems, we just tend to just delve completely into buying a product, buying something, putting across and making sure and thinking that, okay, that is going to solve all of our problems. But essentially, it is much beyond that. So what I'm going to cover today is just setting the foundation about why security is important. Okay, so why, why should we think of security? So everyone here wants to know about new products, new things, but they're more uh, around uh, technology, meaning the people and process element and how everyone, everything joins together. Then I would talk a bit of uh, what is required in security, so your functional requirements, your non-functional requirements. Uh, depending on the use cases that we typically tend to talk about, that will differ. So uh, a bit on those. And then I will delve into the how and with what phases, which is to do with, okay, what is the logical approach that we do in Cisco to approach those problems, not just uh, buying something and then thinking that it will solve the problem. So this is a known a framework that, uh, that typically is used in the industry. So one of the known frameworks. Uh, so you might have heard of uh, TOGAF or uh, Zachman and, and those kind of things. But this is one of those where IT is being considered about, okay, what is it that we are solving? What is a business issue? What is a business vision? What are the things that worries from a, from a customer point of view? So take for an example, uh, there's a retail customer. So what are the things that they might be worried about from solving something as a day-to-day -day challenges that they might have, like PCA compliance. So all of the credit card information is, is paramount for them. But for a healthcare customer, that not might be the case. It could be something else, PIA information for them maybe. For a company like pharmaceutical, ph uh, like AstraZeneca and, uh, and those kind of guys, for them it is supply chain risks, right? So it is different. Everyone will have different sort of business challenges and that has to be completely understood in the first two phases, which is understanding the contextual information, building that contextual model, just a snapshot of what is required to be solved. And then you go, go down further, meaning you go to the conceptual vision, uh, conceptual fa phases of this is the problems, these are the things that, these are my challenges that I'm solving. And then you go into, okay, let's see how we build everything together. And finally, you come into products, services, to, to make sure that, okay, that is all tying up. Security, by default, is always considered as an afterphase. We think of security as a reactive approach. So there's a Tesco bank breach. So okay, we go and see what are the things that happened, what were the products that they were using, how, how, how was a governance uh, maintained? So do they prop maintain a proper governance? So we, we, it is more of a reactive approach. We, we tend to think always that way. So coming to the challenges then, uh, quite common. But it is, uh, this one stands out, fragmented and siloed. Always it is fragmented and siloed. We think antivirus, if we buy something, it will solve all the problems. But not really. It is, it is always a whack-a-mole in the sense we solve one thing at a time in a piecemeal basis and think it is, it is all disappeared. So we are all fine. But you never know. Security is uh, so changed nowadays in, in, in the sense Hacking is a standard now. Hacking is something that is well-funded. People are finding ways to get into your network. And, and no matter what you do, you will be breached somehow, sometime. It is not when, but when. That is, that is a logic that we're going ahead with. So it is, because security is always an afterthought, it is not operationalized. It is always thought about in terms of compliance. Are we PCA compliant? So there is a GDPR coming on next year, mid, right? So, they started think of thinking of, okay, are we GDPR compliant? What kind of data are we protecting? Where is it stored? Is it in the cloud, private cloud, in the computers, in the data center? We have started to think more from a compliance point of view. Thinking security, and not because if you think security, it has to be more than just a compliance bit. Right? So that is the whole challenges that we face today. Uh, it is always technology-led, quite common. 
So buy something and thinking that, okay, that is going to solve all our problems. Typically, if, uh, if you think of a senior stakeholder from a security standpoint, a uh, CISO or a senior security uh, architect who has, uh, who has the ability to take decisions on what is the next phase of security in the organization, these are the challenges that they normally face. Uh, he, he, he is hit with an incident, then he would think, okay, who did that? When did that occur? How long that was in the environment? These things will come on later as a reactive approach to, to, to all the problems that, these, uh, that concerns him. So if you just combine all of them together, it is, it is again an afterthought. The same things that I highlighted before in, the, in terms of the challenges that he's facing. The result of that is that you build capabilities in-house or you outsource to a potential vendor thinking that he might be having all the capabilities to solve your problems. But essentially, you are buying stuff, you're adding more complexity. You're not sure that it is governed properly. It is solving that business problem that you might be having. So this gap is keeping on increasing day by day. right? So we, d we don't know what the problem is, but we might know a bit of that. We buy something, but we add more complexity. We are building some capabilities, but we are not ensuring that that is solving the complete problem statement. Hence, that is a gap that always keeps on increasing, and we need to be mindful of that fact. Some statistics to just counter or just to make sure that whatever I was saying uh, adds value. There is that, uh, it might not be readable, but ITRC is a known company that publishes all the known threats or known uh, things that is compromised. So it has all of the industry verticals, be it uh, educa educational or government or medical. They, they publishes that information every day or every month, every quarter, which highlights the kind of breaches that is happening every day, the kind of things that is happening which you're not aware of. Some, some things that you take off, we, we are very comfortable talking about Gartner Magic Cordon, for rest of cycles, top right corner, and we think if we buy the best of breed technology, we're protected. But not really, because uh, there, is, there is more to do with people and process element, which we tend to ignore all the time, right? So hence, if you think of uh, integrated security architecture, it has to be basically four pillars. You have to do a architecture risk assessment, first of all because business risk is the key driver to security. Risks, if not identified, we don't know what we are protecting. Once we know that risk assessment, once we know all the risk management frameworks after using them, then you go to the next phase of architecture, which is your design and architecture. So you design your models, you make sure that, okay, whatever you're designing matches or aligns to the, to the risks that you've identified. You did a business impact assessment. Make sure that, okay, yes, I am okay with the risks that is there in my attack surface, and I'm trying to reduce those. Then you go to the next phase, which is implementing controls. So you chose something, then you want to implement those controls. Make sure that is, again, tying up to the risks that was identified, all the threats was taken care of. And the final phase, the most important phase, which is operations, your SOC. Do you have some in-house in capability to manage those things day in and day out? So if these four pillars are taken care of, we think that we are doing architecture properly. It is not, not just a bunch of boxes joined up. It is much more than that. Uh, doing that, probably we will be in this scenario where you have more effectiveness, you have more clarity on what you're building, and you're securing your organization or yourselves. So that's the goal. Now taking those approaches that I highlighted with, okay, uh, why security, what in security, uh, we, we tend to go, we, are just, we will be in a much better position uh, in, in uh, selecting controls that way. So uh, taking the same concept again, so we think we, sh we are always lying here. We, we always do technology because we are happy with doing that. We are technology, uh, I mean, we, we understand that and we are very happy doing that but we tend to ignore these things on the top. Top-down view is paramount. It is important when you think of security because of all the reasons there, it, uh, it, is, it is a vital part of the enterprise architecture. So if you have an EA function in the organization, 
Make sure security is embedded in, into it. It is not an add-on, but it is well integrated with your business architecture, with your data architectures, with your application that you're building, either in-house or you're buying something from outside. Make sure that your security architect is aware of what you're doing on the top layers. And then when you buy something, when you do a technology architecture, it gels very well. <coughs> okay? Hence, this people and process and technologies is quite key when you think of architecture uh, or building architecture for your organization. This is what we are practicing within Cisco. So a, a cut down version of, uh, of the known frameworks, you might call that way. But essentially, it's the same thing. So when you think or when you approach Cisco, we would ask you or we would uh, essentially be uh, uh, asking you these questions like, OK, what's your, uh, do you have an IT strategy at all? So do you have something? How is your business? How does your business work day in and day out? Do you have a business strategy? What kind of IT strategy is there to support that business vision? Right? Um, then I get into uh, the InfoSec strategy. Do you have something? What are the kind of, kind of stakeholders that you have in your security world that manages that for you? Finally, it would be the business and technology requirements. Because if we talk that language, it makes sense for the stakeholder to understand that, yes, we are serious on security. It is not just that that we have a best of breed product, a big security portfolio, and we want to sell everything to you. But we want to make sure that if you have something already, if you have a functioning firewall, there's no point changing that because it, it is working, right? It, it, from an architecture standpoint, there's no point of changing something that is already working. Reusability is a more, more key aspect in architecture, which has to be understood. So things like your seamless connection, your secure connection, how sustainable it is, all that is a part of business requirements that we drill out in that scenario. So be it uh, you start here, but we map back. We ask these questions and make sure that we get more and more information about uh, what your business objectives are before you be, we make the solutions work for you. Uh, coming, to, coming to now the third phase, which we talked about, why, what, how. So how is what I'm going to start now. Uh, this is the attack continuum that we tend to speak quite a lot. This was, uh, this was uh, uh, taken from Sourcefire acquisition. So this was Sourcefire uh, back in the days, two years back, when we acquired Sourcefire. Before, we, before an attack, what would you do? What would you do during an attack? And if you're already attacked, and if there is something that you want to figure out, what's after phase? What does that look like? So all of our products sit align with these BDA journey, if you like that way. Now taking the same approach, if I tie that to a known framework. So these are the known frameworks. You might be aware of a few of them. But essentially, we don't tend to speak much about, OK, are you practicing COBIT? Are you practicing uh, ISO 27001, the ISMS policies within ISOs? right? So it is well-defined frameworks that is in existence. Uh, so if, if you're practicing these, well and good. But if you're not, I would highly encourage you, because we follow that. We, even if we say BDA, it quite well aligns to these frameworks uh, quite, uh, quite extensively. NIST, all of the NIST controls that's, that is in, in place, we, we, tend that, we tend to say that all of our products quite well align to those, uh, those controls that NIST, NIST has uh, uh, portrayed or published. Even the SAN 20 controls, the SANS top 20 controls, you can't do everything with that. But yes, you have a benchmark that what you're trying to address, those kind of things. Taking the same NIST example as a framework and aligning that to our BDA, if you can see it quite well aligns to, to uh, NIST. So this is our BDA, uh, BB, uh, DNA, before, during, and after. It's just a change in the name. But they do the same thing with a different uh, with the different names, that's it. But the idea is the same. They are trying to align their controls in a different way, which we can very well align with. Now, taking a step further, if you align all of our products that we have got in our portfolio, you can see these are the controls that NIST has highlighted on the left here. Uh, you would see our products like the ASAs or AMP or IAC or AnyConnect. I'll talk about these in a bit more detail. But the idea is all the NIST controls quite well align to the products that we have in our uh, capability matrix. And, uh, 
And one thing to note is, one thing very much is important here to note, uh, that technology cannot solve all the problems. So there are a few things that are in white here. Things like your, your uh, uh, recovery planning, like your governance. You can't do anything with whatever you buy from a technology standpoint, nothing at all. If you don't have a robust security governance framework that you're practicing or you're trying to adopt, uh, it will be a failure because there's a known saying that there is, there is no patch for a human error, right? There's nothing, nothing, nothing you can do. Whatever you buy, if there is a human error, none of the technologies can do anything for you. So if you don't have a robust process that goes behind your technology stack, you will be breached. So hence, uh, you need to make sure that uh, you have that kind of things. And we do that with our services. So our partners, our in-house uh, in advanced services takes care of those elements. So if, if, if Cisco products and services go in hand in hand in hand, uh, you have the product, uh, you have the technology people and process all joined up. Much more better solution, much more better architecture solution that you will get in that, in that way. Uh, now coming to, let's talk about technology because that is what we're here for. Cisco produces products every day. It, it buys stuff every day. It acquires companies every quarter, every month. So let's see what we have got today. So this is, uh, this is a perimeter. I don't know where it is missing. There's a perimeter here. There is a perimeter where you have an in, inbound user who is sitting on-prem, and there is a roaming user who is uh, in the coffee shop, at home, somewhere. The first layer of defense that you would get is your open DNS, or umbrella that we call. Things going to malicious domains, everything will, will be tracked there, as Paul mentioned. All of the noise that you want to stop at the perimeter, that's what it does. First layer of defense. You, you make sure that you go to the right domain. If you're not, you'll be blocked, give it a message, uh, and so on and so forth. In the perimeter, you also have a next generation firewall, which could do basic state wall for stateful firewalling, or you could have extra capabilities in the firewall doing your next generation features, like your AMP, your uh, advanced visibility and control, your URL redirection, likewise. So you are controlled, you are protected from that first layer of defense with these two technologies. Now, you can have uh, in the access layer, so what are the main pivots? What are the, what are the main areas that you might uh, get a threat coming from? Perimeter, endpoint, cloud, VPN. These are the four major ones that I can think of. At the access layer, you have ISC and TrustSec, which is our next generation uh, NAC solution that we've got. Again, if you, if, you're, if you are close to Gartner, they are always number one, top right corner, ISC and TrustSec. TrustSec is a technology inbuilt within ISC. So you don't need to have ISC, but you can have TrustSec. It is more of a, uh, more of a segmentation solution that we have got. The more, uh, it, is, it is to do with security group tags. No need to worry about any source IPs, destination IPs, and how you manage your access control entries, which are there from ages. But if you have TrustSec, you can minimize that complexity with less a number of rules in your firewalls, in your access layer, in your distribution layer, that is ISC, doing a basic AAA, you're using your, uh, doing your guest, BYOD, profiling, posturing, and all, all those kind of advanced use cases. So you know that a user who is coming in, I know who that is, and I will authorize you if you authenticate successfully with an ACL, with a VLAN, with an SGT, with a filter ID, number of things. And then I'm sure that, okay, I know the guys who are uh, live in my network who is authenticating successfully now, are legitimate. But that legitimate user could go and download a malware from somewhere, right? Because he has access to port 80, he has access to port 443. He got a malware, but what would I do? So ICE is completely blind then because he has authenticated, he has done his AAA, he's seeing all the all, all accounting information about what he's doing and what is going on. Application based control, he will not have any view of what, what to do with that. Then you have things like PX grid, like uh, platform exchange grid. I will talk, there is a slide on that. But essentially what it means is you have multiple third parties doing different things on their own, uh, like IPS catching those events, uh, an AMP solution uh, catching all the malwares. 
that can inform ISCL, hey, this session was all clean. It was doing uh, some basic uh, web traffic, but now it has got a malware and, is, and it is infecting everyone. Can you do something on that? With PX grid integration of that IPS and ISC, ISC can issue a COA, change of authorization, which is RFC 3576, 5176, a basic radius COA. That will enable the port bounce on the access layer to move that session from VLAN 10 maybe, if it was in a clean employee VLAN, to VLAN 15, which is block, which is remediate, which is a number of other things that you can enable at the same point on the fly. That's the power of ISC being the central of ecosystem, managing even other third parties in the mix, okay? Now, uh, that is access layer protected. In the data center, you have the same set of functionalities that you've got in the perimeter. The next generation firewall, either on the ASA or standalone, you can have those functionalities protecting uh, your data center applications in the DC. Cross-sec, again, can be one of the use cases there. All applications that you want to uh, segment, maintain, I can use tags. I don't want to use IP addresses. You could use that using uh, cross-sec as well. Now, we have done the before phase, a lot of protection, so we should be happy with, uh, there shouldn't be anything coming in after that. But in the during phase, we also can do IPS on those same firewalls. So just think architecture. We are reusing the same stuff that we have placed before. I'm not buying any other stuff to, uh, to give you a solution uh, to just buy IPS, because IPS is inbuilt. One functionality within the same box, you can do IPS. Uh, and with ISC, the same thing. You can trigger alerts and stop things going uh, ahead. Uh, now you have email and web because people are in the network. They will access the email. They will go to web. We have solutions there from an email and, and, uh, and web protection with our ScanSIF and, uh, and uh, those acquisitions that we've made about a couple of years back. But we have those protection there uh, for email and web. Cloud log, you only talked about that. So that's one more element. For, for app users and files that you want to access, another layer. So uh, another, uh, another layer of protection. Now that during and before phase is done, we are in the after phase. So you are in the attack phase. There it was an attack that came in and went off. Do you want to track that? Normally we don't, we, we just need to ignore because we are fine now. There was something that happened yesterday. Do I need to track that? Ideally, yes, because you would want to build that pattern of Okay, what things happened yesterday? I want to see that. Can I go ret retrospective? Can I go a week back to see when that, where that file came from? What, what elements does it, did it touch? What systems did it, did it touch? That is where the AMP, the power of AMP comes in, your advanced malware protection, again from SourceFire. But AMP, uh, the message of AMP is, it is not just a pinpointed one solution. It is in your endpoint. It is in the web and email solution. It is in the firewalls. So no matter where the, the malicious or that uh, malware is coming from, you are protected because AMP is everywhere. It is called a systemic response. If you are in the airport, you, you connect via VPN to an OpenSSID, uh, you got infected, there could be AMP running on your endpoint that will catch that threat. If you don't have that, you hit your VPN head end and you try to access an application in your data center, AMP is running on that VPN head end as well. So it is attacking that malware from all of the places. And it, it is, that, that, is what, that is the power of AMP. It is attacking from everywhere. It is everywhere. Uh, some more stuff, so that's not enough. Uh, we have got a CTA, Cognitive Threat Analytics, which is seeing the proxy logs. So proxy logs going not just to our email and web solutions, but to maybe blue code proxy. If blue code can send all the proxy logs, it can analyze and give you more details. Okay, this is doing this thing, and it will, you'll have more rich context information. That is what CTA does. And finally, you have NetFlow. So LandCorp acquisition, a couple of months back. Quite important, because think of a scenario. You have authenticated someone. You are in a trusted zone in the data center. You think anyone in the DC is fine. I, I trust these guys. but. Think of the east to west traffic, host to host communications, a communication occurring 3 a.m. in the morning to a illegitimate site downloading stuff. Do you want to track those? 
you, you should, because that is what the net flow will give you. We, we support full net flow, no sample net flow. It can support J flow, S flows and stuff, but that would be sampled. In Cisco's world, it is a full net flow. You get to see deep packet inspection. You get to see everything that is going on with NetFlow version 9, flexible NetFlow. With AnyConnect, you have the power of pushing uh, uh, the, the visibility information from that endpoint to this controller, much more context information. And with the power of IAC, again, if you see something malicious, 3 a.m. in the morning, you wouldn't have your IT support to manage that. You could remediate that, but that is, an, that is not an automatic feature right now. You could initi initiate a trigger to ISC to do a COA again, block that completely. So that's, that's, uh, that's a flow analysis bit, host to host traffic, east to west traffic. But you could also see a net flow enabled in north south as well. So I, I showed you a firewall there in the perimeter, in the DC. You could choose where you need to enable net flow and then see all the transactions happening. Any abnormal behavior, you could, that can trigger a flag and you could contain that with IAC. So if you think, if you see, uh, and uh, if you see, there are so many things that I talked about with one thing at the top left corner, Talos, is our threat intelligence. So a number of uh, our Paul and Yoni both mentioned Talos. That's our intelligence. That's our intelligence feed. So a couple of researchers, close to 200, I think, I don't remember how much is it, Paul, but close to 200 researchers who, who do that day in and day out. So seeing the feed, seeing all the emails coming through, uh, we see lots, of, uh, there are some statistics of how much data they see, but lots and lots of data they see, and they will feed that information to all of these products. It is consistent. So if you buy an ASA with the next generation face, uh, capabilities in it, you don't need to buy Talos because that is there in the background, feeding all the information to you. So that's the integrated view. Now, with an architecture hat on, I don't need to buy all of these. That's, the power, that's what is the message that I want to push forward. Because as an architect, you would need to see that top-down view first. If you already have something running, I would just leave that running. But I would want to enhance the, the capability so that you are more close to the attack surface. And then you attack, uh, uh, you make sure you, you contain your risks. You have to make sure that uh, whatever business you're supporting, uh, you're making a, a, a solution that is aligning to the risk appetite of that customer, not just buying stuff and making that complex word, uh, that capability and complex uh, uh, gap always increasing. Right, so uh, these are all the same. It is the same thing, but it is showing you uh, how all of these products are joined up. Right, so it is it's quite a busy slide, but if you see, there is a seam there. There is a PCAP information that you can feed. There, there are some patch management information that you can push to, a, a, to PX credit and things like that. Again, it is not just Cisco. It is other weeds, other things and other bits and pieces that is all joined up. <clears throat> uh, this is what the Talos slide is about, how much data it sees. Uh, 120, 120 terabytes of intelligence. Uh, you don't have these many companies. A few of these companies are not this big. <laughs> Talos with 200 threat uh, engineers are doing this day in and day out. So if you see, this amounts to lots and lots of data that, that is quite, quite rich. And you can use that and consume that for your organization to make your security appetite or your security solution much robust. This is one example where you have a, a problem statement it takes about a minute or so, but quite, quite handy. To, and there's a demo as well at the end, which is on the same lines. There is a problem, which is to do with a PDF file, which is a malicious file that gets downloaded from internet, goes to one of the hosts. Now, that is spreading, and uh, it is going to the east to west traffic that I talked about. So you authenticated it went to so someone, downloaded a malware from somewhere. And uh, it is spreading. It is going to the data center now. It is. Uh, it went to your critical applications in the DC, and it is spreading. In in a normal world, how much time would it take to detect that? You think? There is a figure somewhere here: 100 to 200 days. It's it's quite normal because it is not uh, it is not from Cisco that we are saying that. It is an industry standard. Industry has come out with this analysis 
you might have something in your network today and you don't know about it. You're not sure what it is doing. So in this statement, in this scenario, you, you got that after about 200 days, there was some data exfiltrated. It could be ransomware. It could be anything. Now, the same scenario, if I have ISC, if I have an IPS solution, if I have an AMP solution, just uh, and trust sec, let's see what happens. So same PDF comes in. I have ISC talking to my firewall, uh, my fireside management console, which is the management console for these uh, guys here. Uh, it does that a COA, and if you see, that is a remediation VLAN where it just contained there. You're not spreading at all because everything is talking to each other. IPS is informing ISC. It is keeping it a track. AMP is always up to date. It is not uh, a signature-based solution because it is always talking to Talos. It is talking to the cloud and making sure that whatever file was, uh, was, was downloaded is known, unknown. We, do we know the disposition of that? It's quite instantaneous. Within minutes, and we've proven that. We have tested that, proven that to multiple uh, uh, companies or multiple customers, and it works. That's the power of IEC, because IEC is always talked about. When you think of security with Cisco, IEC is a central point. It is something that will solve uh, for you. And AMP, I talked about AMP is everywhere, systemic response. It is not just at the endpoints. It is an email web solution in the network. Uh, even AnyConnect, if you've heard of AnyConnect, if you have AnyConnect, you can just enable uh, AMP at the endpoints using AnyConnect. Again, an architecture advantage. I'm not pushing anything else. You already have something. I'm using it a way to enable AMP because you already have AnyConnect. Um, this is to do with uh, DC as well. So even in the data center, so I'm not just talking campus, I'm not just, just talking access layer. In the data center, I'm using ACI. I'm using uh, some endpoint policy groups to manage my uh, compute. I manage, manage my applications that are in the data center. How will a SGT that was created in the access layer known to an EPG that was created in the ACI world? It can happen today because we integrate that as well. So all the ACI fabric is known uh, or is well integrated with the SGTs that was created in the access layer or with IAC. With the new flavors of uh, firepower threat defense, you know, 4100s, 9300s, enterprise class firewalls, you could use those and enable all those features that we talked about from next generation capabilities. Uh, finally, this PX grid, I thought this is important to share what, what is it that you can talk to if you have IAC. If you have multiple third parties in your, in, your, in your environment, can I use IAC to talk to those guys? Yes, you can. Uh, checkpoint firewall, InfoBlox DNS firewall. Uh, you have uh, ping, secure auth, IoT, quite prevalent. Hackers are finding a way to come in. We, we say pivot. So a new uh, device comes in, is identified, and there is a way to come in via backdoor. Now these guys can identify those people or those devices or those endpoints, and it can always do a real-time scan and inform ISC that, okay, this is not something that I was aware of. IEC did a profiling and know that there are 10,000 devices in the network, but there could be 10,500 which we're not aware of, and these guys will tell, uh, will tell ISC to contain that. Just of today, there are a few more uh, products that have added. Tripwire, Arc, so all, all different areas. This is regulatory and compliance. That is to do with application protection. So you're just seeing how it is growing. It is just two years now with PX Grid, which we have enabled, and we have got 50 plus partners, which is working with us to make it more robust. Now, it is not an API solution. It is not an API-based solution. It works in a way that we say a publisher subscription model, PubSub. So ISC is collecting all the context information, publishing that to anyone who can come and consume. As a PX grid partner, they can act as a PX grid client, have a certificate, have a secure communication, and take care uh, and, and consume all the information that, that, that ISC is publishing. Likewise, the third party can publish information and ISC can come and consume. It works both ways. Uh, finally, AnyConnect, because it is not just a, a, a VPN client. It is doing your posture for ISC. 
It is doing, it is making sure that you can enable AMP if you have any connect. It can do uh, network visibility, talked about network visibility module in any connect, pushing all the NetFlow information to your controller, and then you can take an action on those kind of things. Uh, it can do things like e-chaining, like if you want machine and user authentication to be chained. So machine booted up, did a machine authentication, it's fine. Then the user logged in, did the user authentication, and then you're in. Now IEC can wait for both of these to be successful before you're allowed to come in. There could be multiple users logging in from the same machine. Many use cases can be solved using e chaining, and any connect is required for that. Uh, with, with CWS, uh, in the future, Umbrella, you have uh, Web Security Essentials, which is part of any connect. You, uh, so all I'm saying is there are a lot many things that you can enable with, within any connect and make your uh, environment more easy to operate and architecturally, no brainer, because you're just reusing the same client for multiple functionalities that you'd want to have. Now, I, I talked about security, but if you think of these three uh, other areas that we operate in, or Cisco, or Cisco operates in, the DC, collaboration, and prison networking, security is embedded everywhere. In the DC, you have things like CrossSec, you have, uh, I talked about ACI, NSGT collaboration, I talked about uh, next generation firewall, secure mobility. In EN, you have, if you're, if you're applying for a refresh for your switches that you might have, Old, old pair of switches you might have. You think of someone, uh, something that might enable NetFlow for you natively. Think of devices that can understand SGT natively because CrossSec works either natively or in the control plane. So whatever SGT is that is pre being created dynamically, I need to make sure that that is pushed to the devices that is in the path. So I have an access layer, distribution layer, and, uh, and a core layer maybe a firewall where, where I want to push uh, ACL, make sure that that cross-sec is aware of those devices. Not 100%, not but to an extent that you can use and consume. So network as a sensor is the power of enabling uh, NetFlow. So if you have NetFlow enabled, you see all the east to west traffic. You see all the things that, is, that worries you from, from a security standpoint. And with IAC, PX grid, same containment uh, use case. With, as an enforcer, I'm using SGTs. So even in the EN world, a lot of things that you can use or think with a security hat on that you can start utilizing day one. Uh, and likewise in collaboration. So, so all I'm saying is it is all joined up. Security is very important. Security is uh, top priority within Cisco. And so it is for the boards. So top five priorities, everyone talk, talks about security, even the investors. So they're investing somewhere, they're thinking how secure you are, how secure your processes are, do you comply with some standards? These are the normal questions. And if we have uh, those kind of uh, things working together, that's important for architecture. If you think siloed, if you think pinpointed, whack-a-mole, you just solve one thing at a time. That is the vision that you'll have. But if you have a bigger picture, you will see much more. You will see the end game of what you're trying to solve. And with, with that in mind, uh, your, your security architecture is embedded across the complete SDLC, complete IT life cycle. Uh, because IT is not just uh, security. Security is much more than IT, right? if you think that way. You have to think in a different way, different mindset. That's it. Any questions? Was it useful at all? Or? Yeah.